everybody welcome back to little ruby's daycare encounters youtube channel where we emphasize play-based learning wellness and research-based solutions to issues in early childhood education if you're new here don't forget to subscribe like share help us reach our next goal of 700 at which point we're going to be doing a giveaway so today i want to talk about our recent visit to the Robert Rusa Moten High School Museum. This will be our third visit. We love to go there because there's so much to see. And every year you go, um, you go to the museum, you see a new thing. It's like there's so much information. There are layers and layers of history at that museum. But today, I just want to focus on, um, you know, one of the students who led the strike when the school when there was a strike at the school and um, just give you a little bit of history about the museum and um, tell you some of the experiences we had um, while we were visiting so I'm going to start with a quote like I usually do and this quote is from multimuseum.org and it says before Selma before Montgomery, there was Farmville, where young people made history. In 1939, a public school called Robert Rusa Moten High School was built for black students. The school was located in Prince Edward County and originally meant to accommodate a total of 180 students. I use originally because even though that was the school's capacity, it eventually became overcrowded with as much as 450 students. Let us do the math. Yes, 270 more students than its capacity. I have seen and experienced overcrowded schools. I understand how the roofs, walls, and furniture can eventually cave in. Leaking roofs meant umbrellas in hand during lessons as classrooms felt like the outdoors when it rained. The conditions of learning were pitiable and something had to be done fast. In March 1951, a train struck one of the Robert Rusa Moten High School buses, leaving five students dead. Among the dead were 14-year-old Hetty Donji, 17-year-old Christine Hendricks, 18-year-old Dodson Hendrix, 18 year old Naomi Hendrix, and 15 years old Winfield Page. Learning that three of these students were from the same family was heart wrenching to me. About a month after the bus accident, students walked out of school as a protest for the deplorable conditions in the school. The workout was orchestrated by two students, Barbara Jones and John Arthur Stokes. The protest became a motivation for a Supreme Court case that preceded a ruling in support of desegregation. Born in New York City in 1935 by Violet and Robert Jones, Barbara Rose Jones relocated to Prince Edward County during World War II. She lived with her maternal grandmother, Mary Croner, on a farm during most of her school age years. Barbara was very frustrated with Prince Edward County schools because of the poor nature of learning facilities. There was a lack of gymnasiums and even science laboratories were non-existent. 
Barbara was so compelled for a change that she talked to a teacher about her unhappiness with the learning environment. The teacher responded to Barbara with a question. Why don't you do something about it? Barbara felt like her teacher was being dismissive, which was discouraging. Nonetheless, it took her months to contemplate and imagine a plan to a successful strike that would encourage people in authority to empathize with their need for a new school building. On April 23rd, 1951, the right time had come. 16-year-old high school student, Barbara Johns, convinced her classmates to walk out of school for a strike to protest the deplorable conditions at Robert Rusa Moten High School. Her optimism, her ability to organize, and her tenacity eventually earned the support of Spotswood Robinson and Oliver Hill, who were both NAACP lawyers. Both lawyers met with students and community members before filing the Davis versus Prince Edward case. In 1954, the Farmville case was one of five cases the United States Supreme Court reviewed as part of Brown versus Board of Education, in which it ruled that segregated schools were unlawful. After the strike, Barbara lived in Montgomery, Alabama, with her uncle Vernon Jones. Barbara graduated from high school, then went on to Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. She eventually graduated from Dresto University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Barbara Jones was married to Reverend William Powell. They had five children. Barbara became a librarian in the Philadelphia Public Schools and she died in 1991. The building that previously accommodated Moten High School was closed in 1993. However, in 1998, the school was declared a National Historic Landmark. The Moten School is now a museum memorializing the battle for civil rights in public education. And I'm just going to leave you with, you know, some of the pictures and videos that we took and um, just let you have the experience, you know, of, of what these students did, of their fights for equality, their fight to um, a better school system, a better school system that was equal or close to those of their counterparts.